Hello, I am Shanna Warwick from Black Boots, and this video is to go along with the kits that you may have received from the Horseheads Library up here in the Finger Lakes region of New York State. If you did not receive a kit and you just want to learn how to make a Nuno quilted scarf, then this is also a video for you. Um, as you may know, you can find me at blackboots.com, and I spell that B-L-C-K-B-T-S dot com. So that's how you find out about all the other amazing things that I do. So let's get started. Um, in your kit, you will find a piece of silk chiffon, roughly the size that I'm going to be working with today. And um, depending if, um, you know, the kit's been kind of moved around a little bit, you may need to go over this just kind of lightly press it with a, um, a low temperature um, iron just to make sure it's nice and flat. But we're going to start with that piece by laying it down on the piece of bubble wrap. Now, I am using a pool noodle, it's our pool cover, which is like basically like an industrial bubble wrap. It's like very thick and it's blue. I chose to use this, although yours in your kit is going to be a clear, just regular old bubble wrap. Um, if you end up wanting to continue doing this type of work, I highly suggest um, investing in some of this pool cover to use instead of constantly buying more bubble, uh, more bubble wrap. And it's also a little bit easier for you to see on video. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and use my blue pool cover bubble wrap. If there's any little extra threads hanging off, you can just cut them off or rip them off, whatever you got to do. And we're going to start by having the bubble wrap on our table bubble side up. You notice I'm wearing this plastic apron. This is really nice just um, as you're leaning over the table or the surface that you're working on, I tend to lean right into my work and sometimes either my shirt that I'm wearing will kind of like rub off onto my surface or I'll end up just getting like a nice wet belly once I uh, add the water to the piece. So just a suggestion, but we're gonna start by, again, having the bubble wrap down with the bubble side up and we're gonna place our silk chiffon scarf roughly in the middle of your bubble wrap, both um, on the width and on the length. And I'm going to move my camera so that you can see uh, my surface versus my cute little face, all right? So this is some bad camera work right now, so just be aware. And again, I'm gonna move this camera so that you can see the surface that we're working on. All right, here we go. You also get to see potentially my dirty studio floor. Okay. All right, so we're working here. Cool. All right, next thing you're going to do is pull out your roving. Now, in your instructions, I've given you kind of my sort of way of working. And depending on how you like to work, you might just want to to start and just go for it and just see what happens or you might want to really like kind of map out your design. Um, the biggest thing to remember right now is that your design is going to shrink 40 to 50 percent in this process. So um, you know just taking that into mind if you want like you know if you want to write like a big love across this and you want it to say love on your scarf you know make it bigger than smaller um, just based on your design. That's just kind of a, an example there, but just something to kind of take into consideration. Now, when I'm working with the roving, I did, you're, you're going to have varying sizes in your kits, but if you're just purchasing roving, it's going to come in like a long, in a big ball, and it'll all be in this nice thick piece. Everything's going all the same direction. Roving is a wool that has been sheared, um, cleaned, carded, and dyed, and then it's all um, laid out so that all these fibers should be going parallel. Now when I, um, again, if you're working from a, a, you know, you just bought your own roving yourself, I would work with the width of it in about thirds. And the way that you separate it is just to put your fingers, kind of find a little spot, a little, make a little hole, and then just sort of Pull it apart nice and light, nice and loosely. 
Um, and then, you know, the piece in your kits are going to be a little bit thinner, a little bit, um, not quite as long, but the way that I work with it is I am right-handed. So in my left hand, I'm wrapping the roving around my hand. And again, no right or wrong way to do this. I'm just showing you the way that I do it. And then I have, you know, about, what is that? Maybe six inches. So it's kind of sticks out here on my hand. And then I'm going to be pulling it out with my opposite hand. So I'm literally going to be taking little tiny wisps. Can you see how I'm pulling this out? And look at how fine that is. Very, very fine. You do not need a lot of wool for Nuna felting. Now I'm just going to start laying it out in what is known as my electric sort of pattern. And this is a way that I will um, cover the entire surface of the silk with wool. And I just kind of fan these out. And again, you're going to kind of play with how you want to do this. But I'm just showing you how I do it to achieve a texture. And I'm going to show you a piece. It's black and white, it's similar to this. It's kind of has this like electric slash cobwebby kind of um, pattern to it. I'll show you on a colored piece of silk. Here's with green silk with black wool over it. And this is a way of covering the entire surface so that the whole piece, when you shrink it down, again, it shrinks 40 to 50%, so that the whole piece will shrink up about at the same rate. Um, so that's the way that I lay out the electric. Let's um, also, I'm gonna show you how to do the edges. So the way that I do the edges so that it's a nice sort of seamed edge, which you see, or hemmed edge rather, which you see here, minus a little hole. It's kind of, you know, it still has an organic look to it, but it's sort of more finished versus this one, which is laid out a little bit differently, but you can see this edge, it leaves like more of like a little ruffle. So those are sort of the two ways that you can do these edges is either, again, just laying the wool kind of up to the edge and just letting it sort of ruffle and do its thing, or taking bits of wool, I take it with my two fingers, so that I'm getting it maybe like the width of like a pencil, and then I'm laying it parallel all along those edges, right on top of the edge of that wool. And I kind of like slightly overlap them a little bit. And this is gonna give you a more finished edge versus that like sort of roughly organic edge. All right, so that's where to do that. Um, and again, you can use whatever colors you want. Maybe we'll add a little bit of this crazy neon color. I'm not gonna fill this whole thing out because I'm just gonna use this as you know my sample for y'all to know how to do it. But I might come back in and pull some of this color in. Then come back in with more of the blue. And this again is to give an overall texture to the silk texture to your piece. But if you wanna go ahead and be more literal and do patterns or like literally use the wool to sort of draw or write like this sort of pattern that I've done here. I also do, if you looked on my website at all, I also do these long pieces where you can see I draw the moon. So it's really up to you how you want to create your scarf. And, you know, you're just learning this. So, you know, it might not come out exactly the way that you envision, but that, you know, that's just part of learning this technique. You should technically have enough wool in that kit for probably two or three of this size scarf because I was pretty generous with the amount of wool that I gave y'all because I because I want you to explore. I want you to do more work with it. Um, I also 
have a video in here of doing felted rocks and you can use the extra wool for that and just go out and find your own felted stone or and or soap it's the same sort of idea it's just if you want to use a soap um, but again if I was gonna finish this I would go along the entire piece with this or with this edge maybe I switch it up and I do this neon color edge on the other side. Um, if it does not make sense for you to hold the wool in one hand and pull it out with the other hand, a lot of my students will do something like this. Let me just show you where they have the wool down on the surface of the table and they just put their one hand and just pull it out this way. So instead of having it wrapped around, they're just using, but, but look at how fine that little wisp of wool is. You do not need a lot of wool for this to work. In fact, it's easier in the next steps if you do not have a ton of wool in your piece. Because if you think about it, all, if this is the silk and this is the wool on top, you, the object of this is to agitate that these um, agitate your piece between the layers of bubble wrap which you'll see in a minute so that all those woolly, little woolly fibers eventually go down into the weave of the silk and then get shrunk up locked into place and become one with that silk so if you have like layers and layers of wool on top of your silk First, all those little woolly fibers have to get through their other little woolly friends before they even hit the surface of the, the silk itself. And you're gonna notice in the next, um, in like two steps from now, why that is um, something that you wanna pay attention to. All right, again, I'm not gonna fill this entire thing out because this is just a demo. So I'm gonna move us on to the next step. I'm gonna move all this well, then I'm using out of the way, and I would like for you to do the same for this next part. So once you have everything laid out, move all of your wool that you've been using, put it back in the bag, move it off of your way, and you're gonna get your um, bowl for cold water. Fill up your bowl of cold water about halfway, which I've already done, and then you're gonna put in enough um, dish detergent, I use Original Dawn, um, enough in here so that when you sort of stir it up, I'm using a ball browser, but you can stir this up with, you know, your finger, with, you know, spoon, whatever you need to do. Stir it up and then pinch it between your fingers and you just want enough soap in there so that you can, I'm sorry, i put it over here. Pinch it between your fingers so there's enough soap in the water that you can feel the bubbles, you can feel the slickness. You don't wanna create a ton of bubbles, so that's why you're putting the water in first and then, you know, a couple swirls of the soap and stirring it up with something else. You don't want this to be a ton of bubbles right now. Now, for those of you who've got the ball browser, totally optional, but what we need to do right now is we're gonna wet this whole thing down. I also have my towel close by so that if I make a little mess, I have a towel ready to uh, sop that up. Okay, so if you're using a ball browser, you're gonna use it just like a um, turkey baster. You're gonna squeeze it, put it into the water, and let it open up. If you're just using a watering can or even the back of your hands and like a cup, you're just putting enough water on the surface so that you wet everything down, like all those woolly fibers, when you look at them, they're all saturated, but you're trying to um, kind of find the line between them being saturated and like making like little pulled up um, bits of water all over your bubble wrap. Again, this is a, something that like, you gotta work on it a little bit, practice a little bit, and you'll figure out the right amount of water. But for right now, since it's your first time, just try to get um, the surface, all the wool wet down and um, without too much extra kind of pooling of water. Um, okay, so at this point, you can kind of scooch in the edges of the wool 
if you did this, just a little bit if they kind of move over, but you don't want to touch the surface and or the surface of the wool very much because then it'll start um, felting on the surface instead of down into the weave of silk. So just be a little careful there. And we're gonna get our other piece of bubble wrap. So I'm gonna move this camera back just a little bit. So here we go. Moving the camera back just a little bit. Okay, I'm gonna get my other piece of bubble wrap. So stay tuned one second. And I'm gonna lay this down on top. This is gonna go bubbles to bubbles. So you may need a friend to kind of help you out. Just be a little careful when you're laying that out. Trying to line everything up, the edges. Just be a little careful. And again, it's bubbles to bubbles. So kind of lightly push it out. But again, you don't wanna move your hands around in here too much because that'll start the wool felt felting on the surface before it goes down into the weave of the silk. Okay, all right, now I'm gonna get a pool noodle. My pool noodle is a little bit fatter than the ones that you have in your kits. It's no difference, but it's the same thing. You're gonna start at the end of your table, have your noodle sort of in the middle of your bubble wrap, and you're gonna start rolling the two pieces of bubble wrap up together. Now, this is might be, I'm gonna make this look really easy. I literally do this multiple times a day. Um, so I'm gonna make it look very easy, but if you have a partner, someone that can help you out, if they're on the opposite end of the table and they're just pulling the top layer of bubble wrap towards them, it's gonna, while you kind of pull the whole thing towards you, it's gonna make it a little bit easier to roll this up. You're getting it nice and tight. You're keeping it as close to the edge, like um, lined up as the edges as possible. Again, you're pulling it back towards you. Your partner might be pulling that top one up. And then you're taking your two ties and you're tying a bow on either end of this roll. So I'm just gonna go in on one end. Again, tie in a bow, not a knot, a bow. You know, get it a little tight. It's gonna stay on there. This might be a point where that towel is going to come in handy if you've had a bunch of water, extra water on there. And you're going to tie this bow. All right, now pull your bowl back over towards your little package here and pick this up and get it right into that bowl and let that water all drip out. Any extra water, let it drip out. Mine does, is probably gonna have a lot less than yours is gonna have in it. Again, because I didn't wet down the whole thing. I just wet down that little area. You're gonna roll, let that drip out. Have your towel close by. You may even want to have it on the surface that you're working on. Move your bowl out of your way. You may, if it's really wet, you might want this towel underneath you. Mine's not really wet, so I'm gonna just set the towel aside. And now begins the rolling. Now, you're gonna roll this a total of 800 times in 200 turn increments. So that means this is the first one, the first roll. I'm gonna pay attention to it. I'm gonna write it on a piece of paper just so I remember how many times I've done it, keep track in my head, whatever works for you. But you want this to roll for a total of 800 times at least. And a roll looks like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, until I get to 200. Um, I'm putting pressure on the package. I'm moving my hands around a little bit. I'm sucking in my guts, bending at my waist, bending my knees a little bit to keep my body nice and tight so I'm not hurting my back. You can sit down to do this. I've seen students put it on the floor and roll it with their feet. Um, you can take your turn, take your time, but you ideally want the 800 rolls to be done either within a day or within like a day or two once you get it wet. Because if this sits around with just wet, soapy water on that wool, it might get a little stanky. 
So, 200 times. Keep counting your head. I'm not gonna do this full eight, 200 times again because this is just a demo. So let's pretend that was 200. So what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna open this package up, untie these ties. And again, you do this after you've rolled 200 times. Keeping those two layers of the bubble wrap, bubble to bubble. I'm gonna open this whole thing up. Move your pool noodle back out of the way. Take the top layer off just very carefully because it might be kind of sticking to this. Just take it up very carefully. And then you're just going to kind of lightly kind of pull it back out if it needs to. You're not touching the surface of this very much at all. Just kind of lightly pulling it back out if it needs to. Making sure everything's straight. If the edge is kind of like fanned out a little bit, you can just go in and like just scooch it in with your little fingers. Again, be very careful. We're not trying to touch the top of layer of that wool yet. And now we're going to put the bubble wrap back on. Again, bubbles to bubbles. We're going to do the same thing. Roll that back up and roll the next 200 times. And you're going to keep doing that those 200 times. Unroll, take the top layer off, straighten everything up, put the bubble wrap on, re-roll it back up, do the next 200 until you get to 800 rolls. Now, in the next video, I'm gonna tell, I'm gonna show you the next part. I'm gonna break it down into two different videos. And yeah, so get to rolling. And then I will see you in part two for the next steps, okay?